I'll tune us out. Okay, guys, so Sarah, so let's start off with uh, um, some, some happy talk. So Sarah is going to tell us about some of the scholarship that she's been doing based around whales in Hawaii. So half of us went to Hawaii a couple weeks ago with, with our class. Other folks didn't. This is an opportunity to hear a little bit more about Hawaii. Um, she's going to a, um, a conference this weekend. Yeah. And this weekend. And so she's working on a talk. And I asked her to just come in really quick and just update us on what her in-progress findings are. So she's going to talk to us for a few minutes. I'm sure she, if you guys have questions or or suggestions, she'd love to answer them or talk with them about you. And so, Sarah. <laughs> okay, so um, I went to Hawaii last, or March 2015, with Dr. Cartwright's class. And we um, were kind of thinking about different ways that we can study the whales. And she focuses a lot on mother and calf behaviors. And so that's what we were studying while we were out there. But um, I also did an internship in the southern res in the San Juan Islands with the southern resident killer whales, and um, there's only about 80 left in their population. And the big thing there was that it's all about vessel disturbance to these whales. So when we went to Hawaii, I was very curious on how the vessel disturbance affects the whales here, uh, because there is little to no um, vessel enforcement for these whales out here. So this was day one of us being out there. We got out of the harbor and right away, there's several boats around it. Some are huge, some are small. There's kayaks all around and there is a humpback whale breaching right there. And it's probably mom and calf. Um, and it was just kind of eye opening to see just how close these whales will get and how the, the boats are getting as close as they can as possible without anybody kind of telling them like, hey, you know, this is a wild animal. It's a lot larger than you and maybe we should keep a little like more distance from them. So uh, we were in Lahaina, so off of Maui, it was about right here. Um, and you can see Lahaina. Um, in this area, it's actually a protected area, it's a sanctuary. But in this area, there's really no like enforcement, like I said. So while we were out there, we only saw like one Coast Guard boat. We never saw any NOAA enforcement. So it was really interesting to see that. So the sanctuary kind of just says like, they have these guidelines on their website where it just says like, here's the whale, here's your boat, go parallel. Don't jump in front of them, don't go behind them, don't leapfrog where you like, the, the whale's coming, you park your boat in front of it. Once the whale passes, you go park your boat in front of it. So they have all these like guidelines on their website, but there was no like signs anywhere while we were in a harbor to see like, these are the guidelines you should be around whales. So it's kind of interesting. Um, so the big thing is, is what is the value of a whale? So I went through 23 different whale watching companies' websites on the prices of how much it was during December to April of a whale watching um, excursion. So this could be you're snorkeling and then you go whale watching. This could be just whale watching. This could be a sunrise whale watching. It could be a sunset whale watching. They had all these different options. It was kind of crazy. So. What I found was about 1.2 visitors go to Maui just between December and April. About 25% of those people will go whale watching because this is the season to see whales. And then from all that, I got all their prices. The average price of a whale watching excursion is about $60. From this, um, then I took that and looked at what is the population of whales that actually go to Hawaii. Um, of the 12,000 whales in the area that are in Alaska and all the other areas when they're feeding grounds, they'll go to Hawaii for their breeding grounds, which is a lot safer. This is more protected. There's little to no killer whales in the area preying on the humpbacks, especially their calves, because they're really small, they're newborns, and they're not very strong against killer whales. So about 9,600 whales are going to Hawaii. So from all of this, the cost of a whale, the price of one whale in 2016 dollars, is $172,000 for one whale a year. Now, each whale will live about 50 years, give or take. So if you take that $172,000, multiply it by 50 years, then you get the whole lifetime cost of a whale is about $8 million. So if you think about one whale has that much influence in Hawaii, think about all the other 9,000 whales. And so they're making so much money in Hawaii off the whales. And there's very, very small amount going to whale research, to going to protection, to going to these guidelines or even the sanctuary. Very small amount of money is actually going back to the whales to protect that habitat. So from there, um, 
there's a lot of cruise lines, there's a lot of big boats that actually go out to Hawaii. And one of the questions was, is it the big boats that are having the most um, effect to these whales? Is they, are they having the most disturbance? And it was actually the kayakers and smaller boats. Uh, people that are less informed about whales, especially. Um, kayakers, I have a nickname for them, they're yakkers, they just keep yakking on their kayaks. Uh, what they do is they kind of look like logs and a whale can't really determine what a huge ship looks like compared to that little kayak. So when these kayaks are all spread out and then a whale comes up and surfaces, people, especially in kayaks, will start kayaking and paddling closer and closer to the whale, not thinking that like they could be harmful to this whale. So, um, especially kayakers, they just, they're not very aware, and especially like in Hawaii, they just give people kayaks. And so people just get on these kayaks, they see a whale, they paddle as fast as they can to it, and they kind of harm the whale. So a mom and a calf could be resting, but all the, if all these kayakers come up to them, they kind of change that behavior, whereas the mom and the calf have to flee instead of staying close, nurturing, nursing, or anything like that. So the kayakers have a bigger impact on the whales than that huge cruise ship. So what we did is this is how we followed the whale. It's called a focal follow. Uh, what happens is we find a mom and a calf and we assess is this a good match. So what we do is we will follow them for an hour. So starting here at pin one, every time the whale comes up and goes down, they leave a footprint or a puka. So we drop a pin right there and we follow their path for about an hour. This one are those kayakers. So you can see here, this is where it starts. When the kayakers um, are here and then they flee very fast away. And now very fast isn't like super fast where you think they're killer whales just getting like super far away. It's actually kind of slow. It, it makes more sense when you, once you put it here because when you're out on the water, it doesn't really seem like that whale's really getting far away. But they are. So um, we followed them and then from this we were able to take calories that they um, used and how fast they were fleeing and their distance traveled. That was how we were able to see if they were actually fleeing or if they were kind of staying a little more neutral or resting. So from all of this, we were able to see that before a uh, vessel was present, their calorie level is not here. Uh, during a vessel presence, it's actually increasing. And after, they're still using more calories to get away from it. So from all of this, we could see that the calories expended is about 31% increase um, to leave or to flee a boat. So even if it's a kayak or if it was just a boat, um, they're getting away. One of the other times that we were in Hawaii, we actually had this boat, it was a sailboat. Um, there was people on the boat and they were snorkeling. And as we were approaching this whale, the guy actually started swimming out to the, the whale and was like, if, ever, if you know, the Marine, uh, the Marine Mammal Protection Act is you have to be 100 yards away. So we watched this guy actually swim all the way to a whale. So that could, even just a person swimming towards a whale, could look intimidating and it could also cause a type of disturbance that the whale has to leave. So, um, overall, 31% increase in calorie consumption just to get away. So these calories could be used for the mom to actually nurse her calf, for the calf to start growing bigger and bigger, because while they're in Hawaii, the big thing is to have the baby, to get that baby big, and then start traveling to Alaska, so they can start feeding on real food, because the moms are not eating while they're in Hawaii. So if the mom is protecting her baby, trying to get away, she's using up more of those calories for more protection and less for feeding, and then from that, it could be more detrimental, and the babies are smaller in size when they're trying to travel up to Alaska. So we also checked to make sure that our boat was not having any influence. Um, what we did was we looked at, we also had some type of focal follows where there was no vessel present. And so we just saw from what our, um, our presence was before, during, and after. And we saw that there was no significant difference. So a lot of people question if it's okay if even our boat is in the water with them. But our boat driver was able to find the sweet spot. So between 100 yards and about 50 yards, she would make sure that the whale, the mom, could see us at all times. And when she was able to see us, she was less threatened to getting away. Whereas like other boats, especially like other whale watching companies, they will come crashing in to the area because they'll see the spouts and they'll just come like in really, really, really fast without being aware of this kind of like sweet spot. And so they'll come in really quick and the whale flees and dives off somewhere else. So it's really about how to watch the behavior and all that kind of good stuff. And we had a really great boat driver that was very aware of this and has been doing it for the last like 15 years. So what we can do though now is Cartwright is actually starting to use UAVs to start doing this research 
also. So she just started doing this last uh, March and even did this last week. She went out to um, Santa Cruz Island and was able to get a few pictures of these whales. So from this, you can see a mom and you can see a calf. And so we can actually start to see if the mom is actually feeding, if she's actually nursing. Uh, body size, so that when these whales are actually leaving, what is the size of the mom? What is the size of the calf? And reoccurrence rates, seeing if when they come back, if that calf is still there. Um, and if the mom is any bigger, or if the mom even made it also. So from this, you can see uh, body size, length, and all that good stuff. You can actually see if the whale is healthy. Um, if it was emaciated, you could actually start to see ribs. Or even you could tell if a, if a mom was pregnant and hasn't had that calf yet, which would be pretty cool to see in Hawaii because they actually haven't recorded an actual birth of a humpback there. They just know that the whales go there, they have birth, and all of a sudden they have a whale with them. And they've never actually been able to record it. So if you could actually look at this body size right here, see if it's larger, it could be pregnant. Uh, if not, then it would be a lot skinnier, and you could see if this humpback calf is getting enough nutrients for its um, travel to Alaska, because that's the big thing, is that the mom needs to be able to feed the calf enough so that it can make this huge migration all the way to Alaska. So vessel presence um, with this is going to be the next thing that like is going to be happening, but it's kind of hard to judge your distance from the whale, and you have to be able to get a very fine picture, and it's taking a lot of practice but they're getting better, we're getting better at doing it. Um, and that's the goal, is that we would have absolutely no vessel presence to start recording this, which is the goal in mind to keep furthering this research. And that's it. Cool. Yeah.